How you guys doing? My name is Pete Cabrera Jr. with Royal Family International School of Identity and Lifestyle. Yeah, so I wanted to make a quick video today on attacks of the enemy. How do you defend against an attack of the enemy? And why is the enemy attacking us if we have more power than he does? And if we have so much power, why is the enemy on us? I mean, how can the enemy mess with us when we have Christ in us and is God allowing the enemy to attack us? I mean, what's going on with all this? I mean, we're going in circles here. I mean, you know, how is it that the enemy has power? Does he have power? Does he not have power? I thought he didn't have power. Why is it that we're being attacked? I mean, what does this attack look like? How do we know if it's the enemy? How do we know if it's not the enemy? How do we know? How do we know? How do we know? <laughs> I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out today. I'm going to help you out. Okay, because I'm going to talk about some things that we as ministers do not talk about for some reason. But you know what? I refuse to be one of those ministers who will not talk about certain things that will help us grow in the body of Christ. Now, I'm not saying people do this intentionally. I'm just saying they do not know. And if they do not know, they can't teach it. So there's some things that are spiritually discerned that you got to just, you know, basically dig in there and look for these things in Christ. And, you know, Scripture says if a man lacks wisdom, lacks wisdom, let him ask. I ask all the time. In fact, the only reason that I ask is so I can tell you. Isn't that awesome? Because <laughs> I'm a teacher. You know, teachers are going to be held accountable for what they teach and what they don't teach. So, why does the enemy attack us, Pete? Why does Satan attack us? How does he do it? Why does he do it? Why does God allow this enemy to attack us? That's a good question good question so here we go God created the enemy right people say Pete why would he create the enemy if he knows he's gonna be doing all these things to his children that's a good question but that's not the question that we're asking we're asking how does he attack and why does he attack that's the question regardless of why he was made why he wasn't made now that's a whole nother issue but we're gonna talk about something that's gonna help you that's gonna matter on your day-to-day -day routine okay this will work 24 hours a day seven days a week in fact when you know this you'll be praising God when you're being attacked by the enemy because all you can do is grow right so okay let me give you an example let's say um, well scripture says that you know he sends us a helper and we know the helper is Holy Spirit so Holy Spirit here's to teach us right so here's the problem that we have a lot of us are listening to the wrong voice in our head Okay, there's a voice in our head called the carnal mind. Now, scripture says to be carnally minded is death, to be spiritually minded is life and peace. We know that. So I'm not saying that you're carnally minded because you have a brain in there. What I'm saying is if you start taking your lead from the brain instead of who you are in Christ and scripture, then you're carnally minded. Now, we all have a brain in there. We all have a carnal mind in here. Okay, it's one thing to have a carnal mind it's another thing to be carnally minded. Now, when I ask you this question, do you have a carnal mind? The question is not, are you carnally minded? Okay? And the answer is yes, you do have a carnal mind because the carnal mind is what helps you uh, basically go around your basic routines every day, brushing your teeth, combing your hair. Me and myself, I don't have that problem. But for those, you know, that comb their hair and stuff like that, that's the carnal mind. <clears throat> when you drive a car, when you're on the phone, when you're uh, going through your groceries, uh, when you're going through life, that's your carnal mind. Okay, now carnally minded means that you get your lead from it. Okay, so this is what I'm getting at. <clears throat> so, we hear things in our minds, right, and we think it's us. Now in scripture, when Adam says, uh, you know, I hid because, you know, we were naked. God says, who told you you were naked? Now, a lot of us would think, well, Satan told him that. No, Satan did not tell him he was naked. His carnal mind told him he was naked. In fact, his mind said, oh, you're naked, and then that's when he hid. Okay, so there's a voice in there that's not you. Okay, you gotta know that. There's a voice in there that's not you. When you understand that there's a voice in there that's not you, you'll be able to take every thought captive Now, let me ask you this. If you're a new creation and you're one with Christ, why do you need to take thoughts captive? Because some of those thoughts 
aren't yours. Some of those thoughts are carnal thoughts that have nothing to do with you, okay? It's called the old man. Now the old man is dead, okay? But what you have now is you have a habit, okay? I tell people when you're in Christ, you don't have a sin issue, you have a sin habit. You need to get out of those habits and learn godly habits, right? That's just my thought. We can argue with that all day long, but I'm not here to argue that point. I'm here to tell you, look, I want to teach you something on how to defend yourself against the enemy and how to become stronger when the enemy attacks. That's what I want to do. I want to teach you to become stronger in Christ. Okay? That's my goal. Not to discuss or argue doctrine. Okay? That's my goal. So here's how you do it. Now, <clears throat> let's say... Uh, well, let me break it down like this. This is this is easier. Um, let's talk about a a, a, temp, a tempter, a tempter, a guy that uh, makes swords. He puts the sword in the fire. It gets red hot, and he gets a hammer, and he beats on that hammer until it gets hard and it gets strong. So what happens is he finds parts in that metal that are weak, and he'll beat that thing into submission until it's nice and firm. Okay. Now here's the problem. When we come to Christ, we're living out of, most of us are living out of our old identity in a carnal mind. And so when the enemy attacks, we just get frustrated. We don't know what to do. We run, we cry out to God. We run in circles. Oh my gosh, why me? What am I going to do? And we just panic, right? Because we're in the old man, not in the new man. And the new man knows what to do. The old man kind of panics, runs, and oh, help me God, right? So the enemy's counting on that. He's counting on you to think out of your own man, out of your carnal mind. He wants that because then you'll go hide like Adam did. You'll get scared like Adam did. You won't know what to do like Adam did, right? That's what he does. He wants to pull you out of that arena and get you losing your mind. Now, the enemy was created to serve God and nothing's changed. He still serves God, okay? Here's what happens. When the enemy attacks us, he attacks the flesh. So what do you do? Well, Romans 8, 8. We shouldn't be in the flesh, right? So if we're getting hit in our flesh, it's because we're in the flesh. Mentally, physically, and emotionally, we're in the flesh. Okay, now, you can be in the flesh now, but mentally and spiritually, you can say, I'm not here. This isn't who I am. I'm in the spirit. I'm one with Christ. That's what walking in the spirit is. You understanding I'm in the spirit and you just line up with it. You agree with it and then you're there, right, mentally. So wherever the mind goes, the body follows. If you're there mentally, you're already gonna be there. Your whole life will be there physically. Wherever your mind is, see, that's the realities of things. See, there's two realities. The reality that the carnal mind gives you and there's the reality that scripture gives you and that the Holy Spirit gives you and that God gives you. Those are two separate realities. Now, you're looking at me saying, Pete, you're here in the physical. I can see you. I can touch you. I can, I can, you're right there. I'm looking right at you. And that's true. But the truth is that I'm a spirit and you can't see that. Okay. I live in the spirit. I'm one with Christ. Right? I'm seated in a heavenly place, but you're like, but you're here, Pete. Uh, yeah, physically, mentally, from this world I'm here, but I'm not from this world because it says that I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ. So in the spirit, I'm there and here, right? And I'm one with Christ. Pretty amazing, right? But you don't see that because it's physical. <laughs> so here's what I'm getting at. When the enemy attacks us, he attacks the flesh. If you are in the flesh, it's gonna hurt. Key is, don't be in the flesh, be in the spirit. That way when the enemy attacks, you understand, oh, I'm an old man, and you get out of that thing, and you process everything in the spirit. For instance, if everything's hitting you, like let's say for instance, you uh, you got an issue with, let's say you have an issue with like porn, right? Because men have an issue with porn. And they catch themselves watching porn, right? Uh, you're like, oh man, the enemies hitting me with porn, with the internet. No, 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 you're in the flesh. You're looking at the internet in the flesh. You're thinking out of a fleshly mind, and you think it's you, but it's not you. It's the carnal mind telling you, oh, I enjoy this, I like this. No, it's the body telling you like that. It's the mind telling you like that. It's not who you are in Christ telling you who likes that. In fact, the spirit isn't saying that. The spirit is saying you need to stop doing that right now, right? Some would call it a conscience, but 
I call that the Spirit of Christ, saying you need to stop. And then you're like, oh, well, I already messed up. I've already been watching it. Oh, you know, I might as well indulge in it because, you know, once I've sinned, I can't sin anymore and I'm already here. See, that's the wrong mindset. See, your mindset should be, oh, man, I'm in the flesh. And get out of that thing, get in the new man and say, oh, no, I'm done with this, right? Because now remember, you're going to say the enemy's attacking you. He's hitting you. Actually, your flesh is going to do what it does when you're in the flesh, and it's going to take the lead. So you should allow the Holy Spirit to be in the, in, in the pilot seat, right? And, but when you allow your flesh, the old man, to take over, he starts driving you insane. Because that's what he does. He drives you insane. The Spirit of Christ will drive you into the kingdom. He'll drive you into his presence. He'll drive you into everything that God is. Now, when I say into his presence, I'm not saying that you're not in his presence right now. A lot of people will say that. You're in his presence 24 hours a day, seven days a week. But mentally, you're, you're constantly thinking about God. You're constantly there with God is what I'm saying. Okay, because there's nowhere you can go. You can't escape God. We know that. Okay. So, you start doing these things out of the flesh, right? And the enemy hits the flesh. And so, when you're getting hit with porn, is because you're allowing your flesh to go there now when you're in a hole you jump out of your flesh into your new man and say that's not who i am and you start praying over the women the men the sight you start blessing them in the name of jesus you say i will not stand for this i will not stand for this in the name of jesus i command freedom over you i command blessings over you i command freedom from porn and you just start speaking this way out of the new man right but what would happen in most cases is we just think we mess up, we beat ourselves up, we condemn ourselves, walk around, oh, whoa, it's me, and you we stay there. You don't want to stay there. You want to come out of that. You want to come out of that and face this thing and the new man, and the new man will handle this thing, right? You'll handle it. So the enemy always hits you in your weak spot. If you're getting hit there, it's because Holy Spirit wants you to work on that. Holy Spirit saying, why are you dealing with that? Why is that affecting you? Why are you jealous right now? Why are you feeling that emotion right now? See, and then the enemy will hit you there day and night, day and night, until you work on that thing. Ain't that amazing? Ain't that an amazing thought, right? Like if you have an issue with, let's say, eating, a eating disorder, and you start getting hungry, and you start getting hungry, oh, the enemy, the enemy, the Holy Spirit is trying to teach you self-control. He wants you to own this thing, right? And what you do is you rely on God, and you're like, I'm going to fight this thing in the name of Jesus, not in my strength, but in your strength. That means get out of the old man, get in the new man. See, getting Christ, see, his strength, his identity, his power, his will, right? And people are like, well, how do you do that, Pete? Yeah, I'll give you a perfect example. For a lot of people who say, you know, I just don't have that faith, Pete. I don't have that faith. I'll show you. When you're in them places, you say, you know what? I'm not going to rely on my faith. I'm going to rely on Christ's faith. And how do you do that? You say, I don't believe I can do it, but Jesus, you believe I can. And because you believe I can... I'm going to agree with you, and we're going to do it based on your faith, not mine. Now, a lot of people would say, how is that even possible? But the reality, we live by the faith of Christ. It's his faith, his, not yours, right? Now, no misunderstand me. There's times when you need a muster of faith, right? Because there's going to be times when you're in the old man, you're, you're beat up, and you just you don't see any way out, and you're going to need faith to believe that this is who you are. You're in Christ, and so then you, you, you function in that. But the new man that you're in, he lives by faith. In fact, you can't separate him from faith because he's the finished work of Christ. Right? He doesn't need to be convinced that he's the finished work of Christ. He is the finished work of Christ. Just like Jesus wasn't walking around trying to be convinced that he was the Son of God. He knew he was, so he didn't need faith. He was faith. He functioned from a reality that I am the Son of God. I'm not trying to convince anyone or myself. He just knew who he was. So... When this stuff happens to you and you're being attacked by the enemy in the flesh, because that's what he attacks. He attacks the flesh. When he attacks you in the flesh, Holy Spirit is teaching you how to handle that. See, we don't do that. We don't handle the situation in Christ. We handle it with, what am I going to do? Oh, man, help me. Help me get out of this. Oh, man, woe is me. I can't get out. I'm going in circles. And the reality is in the kingdom of God, you're going to keep going in circles till you get it right because you do not fail in the kingdom of God. You just get to take the test over and over and over until you get it right because, see, there's no failure in the kingdom. And if you're failing, it's because you're in the old man. But if you're the new man, all you can do is grow. So when you're being attacked, you understand 
what's happening. You're being trained. You're being trained. See, when you're a champion, who are you going to fight? Look at David, David and Goliath. Fought a champion. Goliath was a champion. Well, you know what? When you're a king, right? When you're a son of God, all you can do is fight champions because you have to grow. So we're fighting a foe when we're in the flesh, but when we're in the spirit, we're not fighting a foe. We're just believing and we're standing. See, that's the issue that we're having in the body of Christ is we're trying to fight everything in the flesh. The scripture says we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, right? So what we do is we just stand, right? It says uh, when you've done all you can do, you're just required to stand. Right? Resist the devil and he will flee. How do you resist? Uh, you resist by giving in to what God says, to who he says you are. That's how you resist the devil. See, because the devil's saying to you, this isn't you, this isn't who you are, you can't, you can't, you can't. To resist that, just believe God. And that's resisting the devil. Just believe God and you're resisting the devil. And he has to flee. Why? Because you're no longer in the old man. You're now the new man. See, a lot of us are being trained in the, in the old man mindset instead of the new man mindset. And the new man mindset says, Bring it on. I'm ready. Why? Because I know who I am in Christ. But when I know who I am in Christ, I'm going to handle this totally different than those who don't know who they are in Christ. See, those who don't know who they are in Christ will get beat up day and night. They'll be scraping. They'll be hurting. They'll be crying out. But those who they know who they are in Christ, they're like, bring it. Bring it on. All I can do is grow because I know who I am. And I know Holy Spirit's training me and teaching me. So the harder you hit, the bigger I'm going to get because I understand you're hitting all my spots that I need to work on and the harder you hit me, the stronger I'm going to get because I understand the mindset is I'm going to be better every time you hit me. So you're like, the harder the enemy hits you, the stronger you're going to get because you, now you understand that you're not being hit. In the new man, you're hitting, getting hit in the flesh and when the flesh is getting hit, that's Holy Spirit telling you deal with that. Why are you dealing with that? Why do you have anger? Why are you getting angry right now? Why are you getting mad right now? And that's because you're in the flesh. So Holy Spirit's like, man, the harder he hits you, Holy Spirit's like, don't you understand? Get out of that. Get out of that situation. See, a lot of people will, will, will go back into addictions. Oh, I just can't get out of this. No, 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 no. See, that's the old man. See, the old man can't get out of it. When you're in Christ, you are out of it. You ain't even in that situation. Your flesh is dealing with that. So the only reason that we don't get out is because our flesh is dealing with it and we're trying to deal with it from a carnal perspective, carnal mindset, and the Holy Spirit is saying, you keep going in the circle because you keep trying to deal with this thing out of the old man and the old way of doing things. You're getting frustrated. Get in the new man and you'll start understanding that you're getting hit there because you need to get out of there. You need to get out of the flesh. You need to stop feeling those things. You need to stop dealing with those things. You need to start being who you are in Christ and allowing everything that's hitting you to make you stronger instead of it driving you to your knees. When you understand that, you will grow because every situation that comes at you, every problem that hits you will only make you greater because see, you're not heading to victory, you're in victory, you're coming from victory, right? And that's how God sees you. You're already victorious in Christ. So we're not trying to be victorious in this thing. It's who you are in Christ. You're victorious all the way around. So when the enemy's hitting you, he's not picking on you. He's telling you, you shouldn't even be in this arena. You're born again. You should be in the spirit. If you can even feel this, it's because you're in the wrong arena. You're in the wrong mindset. Stay, stay, like I tell people, get in your lane. That's the flesh, get in your lane. You shouldn't be over there. That's where the enemy's at. The enemy's in the flesh. What you doing over there? Oh man, that hurt my feelings. What, what, what hurt your feelings? What are you doing over there? See, Holy Spirit will allow that thing to hit you to tell you, dude, you, you're crossing the line. You shouldn't even be over there. You should be over here with us. Right? Now, a lot of people say, you know, God won't allow that. But you know what? Scripture says this, that when Jesus was baptized, it said that the Holy Spirit led him into the desert to be tempted of the devil. Why would the Holy Spirit allow Jesus to be tempted of the devil? See, because the Holy Spirit cannot be tempted, right? Eve was Adam's helper and she could be tempted. Holy Spirit was Jesus's helper and he could not be tempted. And the reason that the enemy did not succeed is because Jesus relied on his helper who was Holy Spirit. 
not on his carnal mind, not on the, the things of this world. He relied on Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit said, this is who you are. See, the enemy kept saying, if you are the son of God, Holy Spirit confirmed in Jesus, you are the son of God. And because you are the son of God, you can handle every temptation that comes your way. Now, I'm not saying to allow yourself to be tempted. What I'm saying is when it comes, you need to know who you are and you need to get into who you are, not into who you're not, and handle that thing because we're sons of God. The world is eagerly waiting the manifestation of the sons of God. And here you are, and there you are, and we're waiting for you to manifest. When problems come, manifest. When issues hit you, manifest. When there's problems and issues coming your way and they're tackling you and hitting you strong is because those are chinks in your armor and Holy Spirit trying to teach you. You need to work on that. You need to work on that. You need to work on that. Oh, that hurt. Yeah, why is that hurting? Oh, because you're in the flesh. Get in the spirit. Oh, yeah, you're going to cry. Yeah, it's going to hurt. Yeah, but you know what? That's what happens when you're training, right? Greatness doesn't happen on accident. It takes work, right? It takes work. You don't believe me? Look at the 12. It took work. He was with Jesus, they were with Jesus three years. It took work, okay? Paul, it took work. It all takes work. If you're sitting here telling yourself that it doesn't take work for you to be renewed in the spirit of your mind, if you're telling me that it doesn't take work, right? If you, oh, we're just going to rest. You know, we're we going to sit here and rest. But you know what? You can rest all you want. I'm going to grow. And the only way you're going to grow is when adversity comes your way. And when it hits you, you need to respond to that thing in who you are not who you're not. It's a totally different mindset, right? The enemy hits every weak point in you. And if you're in the old man, it'll destroy you. But if you're in the new man, and you have that mindset that I'm growing right now, see, this isn't failure, this is progress. When you fall and get up, it's progress because you're learning how not to fall when that happens again. So if you're beating yourself up over things that are happening to you over and over and over again, it's because you're dealing with it out of the wrong mindset. Get in the mind of Christ, get up, dust yourself off. Scripture says that a righteous man falls seven times. Seven times. So guys, in the name of Jesus, that's how you handle this stuff. It's not hard. It's, it's so easy. See, the gospel is simple. We make it so hard, okay? We make it so hard. You know, I heard a story um, from Good to Great. It's a, it's a book, it's pretty awesome. It talks about a hedgehog and a fox, right? A fox is always trying to find a way to get the hedgehog. The hedgehog just rolls into a ball and he's not worried about that stuff. He just does what he has to do. Simple, simple. We make things so hard. We're trying to look at every angle and trying to find out how to get this thing. Reality is it's really simple. If this video helped you in any way and you want more, just make sure you click the like button and the subscribe button. Share this with somebody you know, in Jesus' name.